What's up, everybody? How you doing? Hope you're doing good. This is another episode of The Watch List. I am JR Jackson. I'll be here to carry you guys through the news of the day, driven by videos, things that you're gonna see or things that you wish you had seen when everybody's talking about it. Because we're here to break down those videos to give just my perspective on how these things work from news and politics, everything you may wanna talk about throughout the day. A couple viral videos, might have a couple restaurant things happening. You gotta know what's going on around you. And um, you know what, I have so much to say today. I'm gonna do this by myself. In fact, let's get started right now. There's a lack of child care where they can't find or afford child care. Uh, is there a fix for that? Well, people decide to have families and, and become parents. Uh, that's something you know they, they need to consider uh, when they make that choice. Uh, I've never really felt it was society's responsibility uh, to take care of other people's children. That's Senator Ron Johnson of Wisconsin uh, responding to a question about child care that's needed for a lot of families and parents that are trying to get back into the workforce as we're trying to fight our way out of this pandemic. So as you heard there, if we're talking about people and, and people trying to get back in the workforce, which many people have been talking about in the country, how we can get back, get the economy going again. People need to go to job interviews, people need to go to work. How will they do that when we're still dealing with these issues with childcare? He did say when people are planning something, they make a choice about whether or not they're gonna have children. And that society shouldn't take care of those little dirty bastards, right? He said something about choice. It's weird because maybe you should take this pro-choice argument to Texas, states like that that are pushing anti-choice bills for women and what they should do with their bodies. In fact, I'm gonna help them out. This is perfect part. You can show them this every time, Ron, about choice. That's something you know they they need to consider uh, when they make that choice. That choice when they make that choice. It's striking how choice is a term that when you use it and it benefits your argument, that suddenly it's a good thing. But when it's not politically expedient for you, choice is just the worst thing you can do. We're supposed to tell you what to do in this free country. But now it's choice. It's choice now because he's thinking about how society shouldn't pay for your kids. You know who society is? In case you guys don't know, society is the people that he's talking to. Society, those folks that he says we're not paying for your children. We pay into this, we're society, we're taxpayers. So it's not someone else paying for us and we're getting handouts and we're these lazy Americans. We're Americans, we pay into the system and we would have would like to have representatives that listen to what we're saying and do those things. Now, again, in case Ron Johnson doesn't know the reason many people may choose to, uh, to not carry a, a pregnancy to term. Here's a study uh, from BMC Women's Health and they talk about many of the reasons that women do uh, go through this decision. Women's reasons for seeking an abortion fell into 11 broad themes. The predominant, the predominant themes identified as reasons for seeking abortion included financial reasons, 40%. What was that about making sure you know that your finances are right, Ron? Okay, 40%, timing 36%, partner related reasons 31%, and the need to focus on other children 29%. Most women reported multiple reasons for seeking an abortion crossing over several themes and that one was at 64%. Let's keep that up again for another second. I know you guys want to see my face again, but I just want to point out a couple of those numbers. Um, 40% financial reasons, I already pointed that out. 36% timing, you know what else people, we have this, you can come back now. You guys have this thought process that it's just a bunch of 16 to 18 to 25 year old women who are seeking this. And it's because they're irresponsible, it's because they're just wilding out and they're just loose women. And and they don't know how to really take care of themselves. And next thing you know, they're just destroying our economy and our society with all of their wildness. Did you see that? It said other children is another thing, partner related issues, another reason. Sounds like there's other things that women might have to take into consideration. And someone like me or Ron Johnson, who've never been through a pregnancy or having a child have no say in. We don't do it. And in fact, if I want to know whether or not what reasons women might have, I do something like look up a study like this and find out what are the main reasons women might do this. Because many of them make these decisions when they're married, 
when they already have children, when they're a little older. But we keep painting this picture of this young, responsible idiot woman who likes to go around and sleep around with a bunch of guys, which by the way, if she wants to, she can. But that's the basis for how we have this negative spotlight on what we deem the worst kinds of people in the world. Anyway, so that's that's just the first point. He did say he wanted to have some other opportunities for people to get jobs. And that would be maybe through a jobs bill, something like that. So a follow up question for Ron Johnson. Where's that opportunities bill for people to get more, to get back into the workforce? Because again, this question began with, do, we, do you think you're gonna do something about the child care issue for getting people back to work? Because we're pushing, get back to work, get back to work, get back to work, your children be damned. I thought we cared about the children. Anyways, he doesn't really have a proposal, but luckily other Wisconsin Republicans, state level Republicans do have a proposal. Spoiler alert, it doesn't work. But let's go to these graphics anyway from Spectrum News 1. Tuesday morning, Republican leaders unveiled their quote, stronger workforce package. And it's aimed at promoting reemployment, protecting safety net programs and eliminating fraud. I'm gonna say that again, promoting reemployment, that sounds good. Protecting safety net programs, we know what that means. Those are the social safety net programs like things like child care programs that we're trying to push. WIC and those those things, welfare, those types of things that they're saying we need to narrow down and specifically unemployment benefits. That's what they're really pushing for and also eliminating fraud. So they're proposing there's fraud in this. They're proposing that unemployment benefits are being used up by a bunch of lazy folks with children. This is how they're getting people back to work. It sounds like they're trying to punish the people that are trying to get back to work while they call them dirty bastards for not really getting back into work. Uh, next quote from that, the proposals include tying unemployment benefits to the employment rate. So there's a shorter period to collect when jobs are plentiful as well as withholding benefits from those who don't show up to job interviews. There would also be more checks on a program eligibility for those who request the help. It sounds like they're targeting the people that they wanna get back to work. Isn't this crazy? It's, it's funny how Republicans have always done this. And I was gonna go to another point from 2012, and we had previous Republicans in office and they had a big jobs program. I'm not gonna take you through that, but I will tell you that it, multiple economists that spoke about that previous program said, it looks like this is a narrowed down thing and it's a special interest bill. That's what politicians do. They tell you one thing in your face, they make you hate the person who's who's the, who's in your society that's looking for that help so they can help contribute to our society and use it against you. And you think you're high and mighty, you think you're with Ron Johnson. Ron Johnson doesn't care about your kids when you're carrying them. He doesn't care about your kids once they're born. He acts like he cares about them when you're carrying them. Once they're born, there's a cartoon, maybe I should have brought it up. They're screaming about protect the children. As soon as the child is born, it's forget that child. What matter with you? You need to take care of your snotty nosed brat. Now give me some money. When are we going to stop going for it? Moving on to this next story. Senator Lindsey Graham, he's warning Mitch McConnell yet again that unless he kneels and kisses the ring of the true leader of the Republican Party, he just might not get a chance to be leader again. Let's watch. United States, um, you've said in the past that the next Republican leader in the Senate has got to be somebody that can work with Donald Trump and his team, uh, whatever happens in 2024. Is that person you? Uh, no, <laughs> no uh, I like my job. I could play more golf in this job than I could in the other job. No, I'm not, I'm not looking to be the Republican leader. I like the job I have. I, the bottom line is, it's just common sense. The most consequential Republican in the nation is Donald Trump. Republicans like what he did as uh, president. They would like to see him run again, count me in that camp. And if you can't work with the leader of the party on a common American first agenda, you won't be successful in the House or the Senate as a leader. Uh, McConnell and Trump uh, did some great things working together during uh, President Trump's presidency. Uh, uh, can that be created? I hope so. But I'm telling you right now, if you're going to run to be leader of the Republican Senate in 2022, you've got to have a working relationship with the most powerful Republican in the country, mm. and that is Donald Trump. Well. There is some truth to what he said. Donald Trump is the most powerful Republican in the country. The question then comes is why? 
He just lost. He continues to push this lie that he won. He's inciting violence everywhere he turns, and he keeps teasing this run while he's under investigation on multiple, multiple things. Now, um, by the way, he, this isn't the first time Lindsey Graham has said this. As I mentioned from the top, just last week, uh, he was on Fox as well. This time he was on Newsmax, and he was quoted as saying, "If you want to be a Republican leader in the House or the Senate." You have to have a working relationship with President Donald Trump. Sounds like he's uh, he's practiced this line. He's the most consequential Republican since Ronald Reagan. He was on handy as court, of course, and it's his nomination if he wants it. And I think he'll get reelected in 2024. He continued on. I like Senator McConnell. Can Senator McConnell effectively work with the leader of the Republican Party, Donald Trump? I'm not going to vote for anyone, anybody that can't have a working relationship with President Trump. He's not the president, number one. If you can't do that, you'll fail. Again, there's little nuggets of truth here and there. He probably could fail because if he doesn't follow behind Donald Trump and kneel down the way Lindsey Graham is doing here. But will it work? What's the next step? And why is this the point when there then this party is going after this particular this particular guy who lost? Remember when one term presidents it was kind of it for them? There's a reason why Republicans always, always go back to one of the kindest people ever in America, <laughs> Jimmy Carter and say, what a loser he was. Do you know why they call him a loser? Do you know why they say that he shouldn't be heard every time he talks about humanitarian efforts and actually being a Christian, the guy who's a real Christian and actually embodies what he says and does? Because he had one term in office and because their uh, their deity, Ronald Reagan won and took over, right? Why is it not H.W. Bush, one term? Donald Trump, one term, but he's the leader of the Republican Party. He's the most consequential Republican in the country. The uh, the um, the leader, the uh, Mitch McConnell, the Senate Minority Leader currently, should be kneeling and kissing his ring, and he won't even get reelected according to Lindsey Graham unless he does so. In fact, specifically said, I wouldn't go and, and and vote for him for this for this position again to be leader unless he follows Donald Trump, who is out of office, who has multiple ethics investigations, who has an entire committee investigating how he incited a near takeover of the Capitol on January 6th. But he's the leader of the Republican Party. There's also this other guy named Lindsey Graham from a few years ago in 2015 when he was running against this same leader of the Republican Party who said, anybody who thinks that Donald Trump can lead this party or or, or, or is, uh, is the best person for this party is crazy. And anybody who does that, we deserve what we get. Well, look at what we're getting. We get Lindsey Graham who's fighting against former Lindsey Graham because he sees where the power is. And in case you forgot, when, uh, when um, John McCain was still around, he was falling behind him too, because he looks for the power. Again, the truth in his statement is that yes, Donald Trump has all this influence. The next question you should ask from position of power and position that Lindsey Graham and, and potentially Ms. McConnell has is why? And maybe this shouldn't be this way. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. Let's light it up a little bit, you guys, before we get out of this one. Police in rural Pennsylvania are asking residents to look out for monkeys on the loose. That's after a truck carrying about 100 monkeys crashed into a dump truck Friday. Now, no people were injured, but authorities say four monkeys escaped. Two have been contained into small, in a small area, but two others remain on the loose in frigid temperatures. The monkeys were being driven to a lab in Florida. Aye, aye, aye. This is how it starts. But we'll see what happens. First of all, so um, there was uh, monkeys <laughs> let loose. It sounds funny. Monkeys on the loose all over the freeway. Um, so there was a, a, there was an escape attempt, I suppose, from these monkeys. They were down for a lab, and one particular Good Samaritan, Michelle Fallon, she pulled over and saw it. And she thought maybe there were cats. She wanted to pet a few, rescue a couple. There's Good Samaritans out there. There's animal lovers, and I love them for it. She went over there and instead it was a monkey hissed in her face and it sprayed her with a mouthful of monkey juices. I'm not sure if that's specifically the uh, the medical or, or the scientific term for whatever was sprayed in her face, but it definitely uh, does not have her feeling well. So the next day she received, she I'm sorry, she developed pink eye symptoms. She had a cough and a runny nose uh, and she's now receiving rabies treatments and has been told by the CDC to monitor her condition as it goes forward. Uh, I'm not sure the things that could potentially happen to her, but just those things right now, are enough to scare me. Um, 
just so you guys know this. Um, so by the way, I'm sorry, before we go to the, uh, potentially my experience in this situation, because you guys just don't know the things I've been through. Um, she does seem to be taking this pretty decently at least. So uh, really quick from her, she was talking to the USA Today, or at least USA, USA Today um, quoted this. Some locals are making out like, oh, I have this new monkey virus. It's a monkey pox and it's gonna be an outbreak. Uh, it's just a monkey hiss in my face. That's all that happened, and I want to protect myself. So um, she's getting a little bit of, of, I guess, concern. Maybe people are hoping that she's okay. Uh, let's take one more look at one of these monkeys that was jumping around, um, and she approached thinking it was a cat. I'm not sure at what point she went from cat to monkey in her thought process, but um, all the other monkeys have been accounted for, and hopefully they're all safe. That is the first thought. And secondly, um, I hope our um, good Samaritan is also safe as well. Now. Um, I live with an animal lover. I live with two animal lovers. I have a wife and a kid. Uh, we have a dog that came into the house when I di didn't want it. You guys have seen Sprocket. Um, I've, I've grown to like the guy a little bit. But what happens in my family is if we see a stray dog on the side of the road anywhere, four lane, four lane street in Los Angeles, pull over, we gotta go get the dog. I said, do you know what that dog's temperament is? Do you know what that dog's got? Do you know if that dog wants you to approach it? Maybe that dog just got away from his abusive owner. He's having a great night. But we've rescued two to three dogs, so three of them, multiple dogs. And every time I'm like, please don't approach that dog. So if you have a cage full of monkeys that just fell out of a truck and you think it's a bunch of cats. I mean, I guess the Good Samaritan thing from my perspective is I'm gonna call maybe a, a, a animal control, any kind of services that can come out and help out. I'm not that guy. My name is not, um, who's the animal guy that used to appear, I'm gonna date myself. Who used to appear back in the day on David Letterman to show off all of his monkeys and his uh, uh, lemurs and everything like that. I'm not that guy, I'm not from Australia and I'm not an animal guy. I don't need to be bit, I don't need to be spit in the face by monkeys. He'll be okay, or if he isn't, it's not my responsibility. I'm sorry, maybe it sounds heartless, but what I don't want is for the next few weeks to have pink eye, runny nose, a cough, and wonder if I have some kind of new virus, disease, something that's gonna take me out, just saying. But anyways, I don't wanna discourage the Good Samaritans from doing what they do. You guys are wonderful, lovely people. Just take a couple seconds. We run a little bit too fast at the sight of a disaster like this. Take your time, protect yourself first. I know I'm the most cautious man in America, but that's why I'm still here. Let's take a quick break, you guys. Ah, oh, there's <laughs> I love that you guys pulled it up. That was early in the pandemic when we were still broadcasting straight from home, home only. And uh, Sprocket wanted to get on camera. Actually, he didn't, I made him. That's our guy, Sprocket. Um, we have more stories on Sprocket. But anyways, let's take this quick break. When we come back, uh, we do have a, a, a bit of an outrageous story. And this, this, this almost set me off, but I'm trying to have a level of understanding. I'm still working on it, I haven't gotten there yet. But um, when it comes to gun nuts, this, get, this doesn't get much nuttier than this. When we come back, we'll, we'll take a look at that one. Well, the young Turks, the Friday show is going to be awesome. We're going to help us over here. Drop it. We became the first ever daily online web television show. No, the Constitution is the very core of America. The fact that we don't spy on American citizens, that we get a warrant, that we go to a judge, that we have a procedure, that we have due process, that is America. On top of that, they go, why don't they just stay at their own schools? You got to realize something. These schools suck. They want people to pull themselves up by their bootstraps. You ain't got no straps, you ain't got no boots. He lit these fires and trash bins all around town out of frustration. 99th most viewed channel today on YouTube. <laughs> the Shorties Award! Best web host. We passed a billion views. Voice award winner, news and information channel, The Young Turks. Oh, another webby. The Young Turks! Can I curse? Yeah! For those of you watching on the live stream, yes, we have adopted a pet iguana that showed up at our door. The haunted version in the dark with our silhouettes. Now let's get to the best line of the debate. And it was definitely the one against Florence. <laughs> <laughs> 
I told you we were coming. And you talk about it when it becomes a problem. Mm -hmm. Our lack of gun control is a problem. Nonsense BS story is hurting that cause, and they need to wake up and recognize that they are being had by these people. Biggest gang in America. The question is, how do we make sure that we blame the person who is dead? What kind of democracy is that? We should never forget that the most powerful people in the world exploited the greatest tragedy in American history to go to war in a country that had a lot of oil. Rolling thunder. That's what this show is. Never in my life did I think I would like to see a dictator, but if there's going to be one, I want it to be Trump. Tick tock, tick tock. Where's the line? We've crossed every line you can imagine. We are a socialist country. It's socialism for the rich. Tick tock, tick tock. You don't have to know the truth, just believe what they tell you. There is no bounds to their monstrous hypocrisy. Tick tock. I think we're gonna win the Senate in 2020. And I think we're gonna have the House and I think we're gonna have the presidency. Tick tock. And in 2020, we're going to clean your clock and we're gonna run you out of town and we're gonna have an actual democracy in this country. November of 2020 could also be potentially the greatest day of our lives. Let us whisper of a dream. It's the watch this, everyone. Hi, how you doing? It's a lovely day. It's Thursday. In fact, I'm gonna find out how you guys are doing because I'm gonna read some of your comments because I love this part. I need a little bit of a energy exchange, a little interaction here. From the members, Eclectic Miscellaneous says it's solo JR day. Yes, it is. You are correct. Are you having fun? I am. Also, someone tell Ron Johnson, also from Eclectic Miscellaneous, someone tell Ron Johnson that entitlements are things that we are entitled to. That's literally what entitlement means. We pay for them, it's all right to get them. Um, I mean, well, the mindset now is you're, you're getting these entitlements based off of what you don't deserve, but we keep forgetting this whole thing about paying. When we're talking about paying taxes, they bring it up anytime they want to um, say that you're doing it for other folks, but not for yourself. So you shouldn't expect anything from it, unless you're a billionaire. Um, Shakita Ngai, Shak Shakata. Guy Nye, the beer dragon. We're gonna call you the beer dragon. Uh, the GOP right to life expires at birth. Very true. Uh, Hammer Dan says, Lindsay reminds me of that high school guy that we let hang around because he had a car. Oh man, you guys were mean. Uh, I do remember those types of guys. And you know what? You gotta invite them in the circle no matter what. You might change them. You might actually feel that. I mean, no, you change them. This guy's probably a good guy. Maybe because you only let him hang around because uh, he had the car was the reason why he turned into Lindsey Graham. Follows anyone else around, uh, but I hear you. Uh, Gambit, thank you for the, uh, by the way, we're on to super chats now. Gambit says, JR, finally, it's Thursday, Gambit. Come on, man, 
No, thank you. I appreciate you. Brian Finzi says, one of my regrets of moving out of Wisconsin is not being able to vote against Ron Johnson. Absolutely. We'll see if enough people vote against him when he's up again. Forbes Zilla says, JR. As someone who has rescued two cats, oh man, I don't even know what she's gonna say. Uh, two cats and three doggos, I will always stop to see if the animals are okay. I don't uh, I don't just go right up to them though, good. Like I said, I won't go up to them at all. I'll be like, oh man, oh man, that, dog, that dog's gonna die tonight. Then I go on, sorry. Um, now, we have a little bit of a debate going on about what we're gonna call the show's viewers. We got the Dragon Squad that's up next with John, but really fast. I know I'm taking a bit of time, but here we go. The Moon Dragon says, uh, we're having a discussion in the chat about what the fans call can call ourselves. Uh, their vote is on A-listers. Uh, Lieutenant Mac McGee says, excited for another afternoon of JR and the watch list. Hey all, cuz I'm one of JR's little <laughs> dirty bastards. <laughs> Sorry, little dirty bastards is just, I don't know. It's what Ron Johnson least went for. Um, also, shh, we're gonna go with the beer dragon again. L uh, dirty little bastards, what the hell is going on? Blind talking heads, what they said. Also, Galfar says, greetings and salutations, sprocket tears. <laughs> and Adrian uh, Levixen Noir says, ooh, sprocket tears. Listen, you guys, I'm gonna go ahead and nip this in the bud now. Sprocket is not gonna be in studio. He's not gonna be here upset that I'm putting him on camera like he did at home. Um, so we can. <laughs> You can try with the sprocketeers, but I don't think it's gonna fit because we still got our inflatable tube man that I have not set up yet. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. At least if nothing else is from me and Barry's with me. Let's get back to some news. How about that, you guys? Um, and we have this insane, insane story. Watch. So Eric, what is this? This is the JR-15. So what we have here is a scaled down AR-15 in polymer. It also weighs 2.2 pounds and it's about a 20% 20, 20 reduction in size. So it fits the kids really well and that'll give them confidence to hold this thing the way they should have confidence holding. It's also just great, it just fits them, it fits them really well. Yeah, and that's, uh, yeah, I've got kids. And so I've got, they're now eight and 10, right? And so they both started shooting age three-ish. I think one of them was just under three one of them just over three, but they've been shooting for as long as I could have guns around. Right? That's awesome, Barrett. That's awesome, Barrett. Uh, that's a uh, owner of We One Tactical showing off their new JR-15. As he pointed out there, it is a miniature child size version of the AR-15. Um, they go into more details about all uh, that goes into this gun that they've developed so that you can make sure your child is shooting at three years old without lugging around dad's big heavy gun. It's sitting on the table. They weren't done yet, there's more details. Got to teach them about the dangers and the risks, but we also have to educate them and take away that curiosity. But one of the biggest challenges is guns aren't made, you know, for a five-year-old to be able to shoot. They're made for adults typically. And so when I came by and saw this yesterday, it excites me. It's going to be very hard to put an adult gun in someone's hand that isn't an adult and they cannot reach it. And so I like this. And Correct. so this is a 22 long rifle. It is super light. So two pounds. Two point two pounds. So 2.2 pounds. He went through a lot of things there that I think, I don't think they understand exactly how this um, looks. <laughs> Actually, no, they completely understand how it looks. But it's it's a completely different a, a dimension of life here. So he said, my kids have been shooting since around age three-ish. And we saw the picture of his child um, holding a gun, leaning on the table. And guns aren't made for a five-year-old to shoot. That's right. That's correct. Also, it's gonna be hard to put an adult gun in kids' hands. Again, correct. Maybe they shouldn't be holding guns. Maybe they shouldn't be learning how to shoot their new JR-15. It's a cute name, by the way. The JR-15, put it in your three-year-old's hands and make sure that he can learn how to shoot up as many people as possible. Now, I know people who know about this product are gonna push back and say, did you really even read about it or listen to what they said? Yes, they start off by saying that there's a, um, a single, a single bullet in the chamber to start them off. 
So they're, they're not mowing down entire uh, uh, fields of people that they can find, it's one shot. So they can shoot one person at a time. Then he says, we're gonna graduate to maybe three to five in a chamber. And some are pushing up for us to get up to 20. Is 20 too much for a three to five year old to, to push? Now they're also pushing a bunch of uh, uh, safety measures. There's a lock on it that says if you turn the back, then they act, the child's hands can't untwist the safety. So once you have the safety up, they, can never, they can't really ever do it. Then the owner of We One admitted, well, if you have a 12 year old, yeah, he can probably have enough strong enough hands to open it up then. So it's from three to 12 year olds, which children are, should be using this extremely lightweight gun that's really easy to use and teaches kids how to shoot as soon as possible. Now they point out as a sporting thing, I hear you. Maybe you're shooting some clay objects that are shooting up in the sky. Maybe you're duck hunting, I don't know. Um, but for some reason, we have this obsession with making sure that we're getting our children to shoot as soon as possible, as quickly as possible and learning about it. So if you learn about it, you said, yeah, they're curious. They see dad's guns hanging around the house. Maybe dad's guns shouldn't be hanging around the house for them to be curious about. You know what I like to do? I like to drive. I like to put together old school cars that are loud and smell like gasoline. You know what my kid likes? He's like, this is very cool, dad. I'd like to drive the car. You know what I haven't done yet? I haven't put him behind the wheel and said, have at it, kid. Here's a couple of phone books and here's a couple of extensions for your feet so you can press the pedals and run into anybody. I don't do that, but I've told him many times, I can't wait until you're 16 so I can teach you how to drive, kid, because I would love to do that. I can share that experience with him. I get you want to share your experience with your child about shooting, but you can't, not that you can't do it right now, but think about why you want to do it right now and think about the implications of that. Think about children who get their hands on their parents' guns and go, I can think of a better way to use this thing. That kid at school keeps bullying me. Here's some more uh, uh, devastating details for this. We won Tactical launched the JR-15 earlier this month. And that's at that annual trade show that I just showed you guys there. Um, and it's the National Shooting Sports Foundation. It's based in New Newtown, Connecticut. If that sounds familiar, that's where a gunman with an AR-15 murdered 26 people at Sandy Hook Elementary School in 2002. Now, I know that this particular company didn't set up the trade show, didn't make sure it was a new town where ironically it's where children were shot up. And for some reason, we still don't care about that. But you have to understand some of the optics here. You have to understand that people lost their children in this and you're promoting something for more children to get their hands on the kinds of weapons that killed their children in this very same town. Other critics of the new rifle took aim at the gunmaker. It was We One, which is also selling swag, which features cartoon skulls with baby pacifiers. One with bows and pigtails and another with a mohawk. Oh, isn't that cute? Oh, look, you can be a little boy with a mohawk with your pacifier and a little girl with pigtails and your pacifier. And look at their eyeballs. If you look closely at their uh, each of their right eyeballs, that's a target. That's a, uh, that's a gun target in their eyeballs. That's cute, isn't that cute? Don't you want your kids to be skulls and maybe have some targets in their eyes? Maybe some might shoot them there one day. It's it's something to aspire to. So anyways, uh, more about the gun safety, I just wanna point this out more specifically. Um, our goal is what they point out in their press release. Our goal from day one is to develop a shooting program, a shooting platform, excuse me, that was not only sized correctly and safe, but also looks, feels and operates just like mom and dad's gun. Safety was so much at the forefront of our thought process that we developed and planted a tamper resistant safety that puts the adult in control of the firearm safety switch. That's what I described to you earlier. He showed it in that video, there's a little knob in the back, you flip the safety and you turn it. Uh, now if we have adults that don't know how to really do that half the time, end up shooting themselves, pick up their gun, shoot their children, shoot their spouses, uh, shoot their neighbors on accident or leave their gun in the bathroom, which we've seen that happen. What do you think the level of Responsibility that may be between a parent and their three year old. Oh Man, I'm sorry, honey, I just forgot to turn the, the safety back off, my bad. Anyways, if you're thinking about this, this imagery and this strategy of making sure that you have this next generation of gun lovers and gun buyers, let's keep it real, gun buyers. This guy is selling guns, he's not, of course he loves the gun culture because it's part of his Business, it's his profession, it's what he does. He develops little guns so they can make sure you have the next sweep of gun people. Just like cigarettes back in the day, isn't that weird? Um, let's, uh, <laughs> I wanna make sure you guys understand this. 
Don't you remember back in the day when cigarettes were just this wild, uh, it's it's good for you, doctors were promoting it. There was ads with doctors with cigarettes in their hands and it was just this normal thing. In fact, it was put in cartoons, it was uh, directed at children and it was not a mistake. In fact, remember this? Gee, we ought to do something, Fred. Okay, how's about taking a nap? I, I got a better idea, let's take a Winston break. That's it. Winston is the one filter cigarette that delivers flavor 20 times a pack. Winston's got that filter blend. Yeah, Fred. Filter blend makes the big taste difference, and only Winston has it up front where it counts. Here, ahead of the pure white filter, Winston packs rich tobacco specially selected and specially processed for good flavor in filter smoking. Yeah, Barney, Winston tastes good like a... Cigarette The Flintstones have been brought to you by Winston, America's best selling, best tasting filter cigarette. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. That was normal. And now it's not. People maybe post those types of things and go, Kate, oh man, you can't believe how quickly this will get canceled. There's a reason behind it because they're targeting it towards the folks that will watch those types of shows. Now I understand Flintstones was was uh, was pushed to everyone, but I was a kid and I watched some Flintstones. I mean, and if you see, Winston, this actually looks a little familiar when cigarettes were just pushed so easily, and I'm not even that old, but. Cigarettes were pushed like this because they were looking to, to indoctrinate the next group of people to lessen the thought process behind the dangers of it. It's 101, if you don't believe me, there was actually an American Lung Association randomly just even this year, just this month, they put out these damning admissions from back in the day from cigarette makers that were talking about how they're grooming this next wave of buyers. So just this first one I'm gonna read. Evidence, this is from RJ Reynolds Tobacco Company. Evidence is now available to indicate that that the 14 to 18 year old group is an increasing segment of the smoking population. RJRT must soon establish a successful new brand in this market. If our position in the industry is to be maintained over the long term, business, business, business. We need to make sure the children are prepared and indoctrinated and now in the, in the culture to make sure they're buying it when they can. And it worked, that was from 1976. The next longer quote, I'm not gonna read this from 1984 that basically said, if we don't get enough people in <laughs> into this, we're gonna fail. Our business is gonna fall apart because the current people that we have in our in, in within our grips and within our buying group are dying. Why are they dying? <laughs> Wonder. <laughs> Crazy how that works. Um, but now we're doing it with guns. So children, pick up your guns, make sure you know all about them, make sure you have the next step of Maybe getting bored with shooting a couple targets. Maybe you want to take it out on someone else. These things happen. I'm not saying it happens for everyone, but if it happens once, that's one too many times. You can wait till your kid is old enough to learn about your guns and uh, and is able to pick one up enough without it falling in front of them. If you have a problem with the gun falling in front of your child, maybe the kid shouldn't have a gun. The guy said it best. Guns aren't made for five year olds. They're not. We've got some vaccine crazy people who like to compare themselves and other folks to Nazis when we come back. We'll be back. Our generation actually has a voice to say who we want. For the first time ever, we are the biggest voting bloc in America. One of the people we've been talking about for months and months will be the president of the United States for the next four years. And for a lot of us, this is the first time that we're ever going to vote. Do you have any idea how much of a difference four years makes? The action that we take right now doesn't just affect us right now. Discussion is important, but words aren't the only thing. You have to take action so that we can actually affect real change instead of just talking about it. Get out there and take a part in making a difference. Every voice really does matter, whether young or old, especially young people, get out there and vote, damn it. Now, more than ever, we can make a change. I'm gonna vote because I want this country to be different. I don't want the older generation to decide our future. I wanna make this world a better place for my son. You can make change. Vote IRL. Vote IRL. Vote IRL. Vote IRL. Vote IRL. Vote in real life. Vote IRL.
Can we eat in here? Joe Crowley is a congressman from New York. He's very powerful, arguably one of the top uh, Democrats in the House. But there's someone finally challenging him, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. The election is today. If she wins, David beats Goliath. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez has defeated Joe Crowley. You made that happen. You're David. You just beat Goliath tonight. 2018 is a warm-up act. Wait till you get a load of 2020. On the watch list, JR. Uh, I'm only gonna read a few that have a couple of names from you guys for our uh, viewer comments. Uh, love that you guys all wrote in. Thank you very much. From Twitch, now we're getting down to the right names here. Wacky, wacky Wally inflatable two man watches. I love it. C23 Jones 88. Uh, also, Marty C59, my grandfather, who had a double barrel 12 gauge. He was, uh, who had a, a double barrel 12 gauge. He was teaching me how to shoot and knocked my shoulder out of joint. Yes, that's what happens. And then, so after that, Maybe they were looking for a double barrels, 12 gauge size down for a child. That's where we are now. The progressive carpenter said, no, not the JR-15. I'm gonna look up what that means. Um, uh, Soy Duffy said, exactly, they are made for adults, 100%. Um, and also, Little Miss Gamer Dragon says, have you ever seen the black and white Looney Tunes? It's war promotion. I've watched every one of those. I was a big Looney Tunes fan as a kid. And once I saw some of the first off the racist stuff, the uh, anti-Semitic stuff, the anti-war stuff, they were they the I think the government specifically, I think it was him and also Dr. Sue stuff. They asked them to do some some war prep things and some uh, things for the military to look at. There's a lot of stuff out there, and it's outrageous. And it's the same voices that you grew up listening to with uh, Bugs Bunny saying pretty bad things. <laughs> Anyways, let's get started on this next story, you guys, um, because the vaccine is causing people to lose their minds. Even in Hitler, Germany, you could you could cross the Alps into Switzerland. You can hide in an attic like Anne Frank did. I visited in 1962 East Germany with my father and met people who had climbed the wall and escaped. So it was possible. Many died truly, it, but it was possible. Today, the mechanisms are being put in place that will make it so none of us can run and none of us can hide. That's RFK Jr., Bobby Kennedy's son, JFK's nephew. Um, they're pushing more fear over the vaccine. There's nowhere you can hide, run, they're coming to get you. This is about a vaccine. It's as if they don't know vaccines have ever existed in life. But there's been response like that for those before, but they need this new wave. Anyways, um, it, it, we just wonder the question that becomes is, if you're running and hiding from a shot that is helping a lot of people. That's helping us get beyond this to this point. I'm not sure if there's been this whole fallout that instead of them getting chased down and stuck in the back with this needle, but it doesn't matter. It's just about fear mongering anyways. So there's more of these health measures to get us going, but this isn't the only guy to do it. I know this is more RFK, everyone's been talking about it, but this isn't just him. And Anne Frank and the Holocaust has to be added because let's just do it for shock value. Who cares if it makes any sense? Um, here's someone else from that same event. Mark my words, we will hold Tony Fauci accountable. We will hold Deborah Brooks accountable. We will hold Joe Biden accountable. But unlike the Nuremberg trials that only tried those doctors that destroyed the lives of human beings, we are going to come after the press that lied to the world. Nuremberg trials, come after the press. A little more fascism for us there. So the vaccine has got them going here. That was a big anti-vaxxer, Del Bigtree also speaking at that event. What's this event? What's what's speaking out about the Holocaust and the vaccines without Marjorie Taylor Greene? Go Marjorie. Rational Jewish person didn't like what happened in, in Nazi Germany and any rational Jewish person doesn't like what's happening with overbearing mass mandates and overbearing vaccine policies. You know, we can look back in a time in history where people were told to wear a gold star and they were definitely treated like second class citizens, so much so that they were put in trains and taken to gas chambers in Nazi Germany. And this is exactly the type of abuse that Nancy Pelosi is talking about. 
Now, I know what you're gonna say, those are just people, they have big names and platforms, they're just trying to get some attention, JR. What about at a school board meeting with just some random citizen? Brainwashing the German society against Jewish people by portraying them as a threat to society and calling them disease spreaders. Sounds familiar, anyone? This then turned into show me your paper segregation and eventually led to brutal killing of entire race of people. If you ask Holocaust survivors why they complied in the beginning, as many voluntarily entered concentration camps, they will tell you because no one had the guts to stand up. So the victims there also didn't have any guts. So we're comparing this to the Holocaust. We're talking about how these Nazis are, are injected in us through the vaccine. And these gutless Holocaust victims are to blame. Okay, well, one of these folks had uh, 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 a family that he lost, that they lost from uh, that. And they have to sit here and listen to these people say this all the time. And this is what they had to say. Really excited to jump on this new trend. I'm calling it first day at an unvaccinated camp. Shame on you. Are you trying to look like a Holocaust survivor because you don't want to be vaccinated? I was four years in a concentration camp. Here, our war is star. Do you want me to help you? Have the day you deserve. It's disgusting, man. And and the only way to do it is to ignore the people that you're using for your political expediency, to use for your school board meeting yelling and people over masks. All of this just because you don't want to do these simple preventative measures that might get us through this, that might make us get to where everyone wants to get to. But in the in the meantime, you want to make sure that happens. Um, okay, so how many people did die in the Holocaust that since it was just this simple little event that's exactly what's happening right now? 17 million people fell victim to the Nazi regime in the Holocaust, as you'll see in this graph. Six million Jews, the Soviet civilians, 5.7 million. Um, it goes on and on. But I mean, it's just the Holocaust. It was so long ago, we can use this. There's a person who's still alive, who spent time there, showed you the actual gold star that he had to wear. Is he gutless? Or maybe was he gutless and then brave after he got out? This is Holocaust Remembrance Day, you guys. and. Um, this is sadly the way many people have to see other folks talking about it as they try to remember. Imagine if this happened something like on 9-11, which is don't forget, never forget. And you have people using it specifically to make sure in your face, to make sure that they get themselves propelled whatever way they can politically to push against preventive measures that would actually save people. And now our blood is tainted with this vaccine. All of these interjections of these kinds of, of, of imagery, it just doesn't sit well, and I'm not. You kind of have to be similar, nearly soulless, to feel like you can do this. Here's another woman at one of these anti-vax rallies wearing a fake gold star, acting like, I'm, I'm not sure how this connection happens. Wait, you're an anti-vaxer, so you're not like those gutless people that were put in concentration camps and murdered, mass murders. This doesn't make any sense. All it is is just a fun dress up game for these folks. Here's my gold star. Isn't this just like the Holocaust? I thought you weren't taking the vaccine that all of us people who have taken it and now we're in the middle of being executed. It doesn't have to make any sense. It just has to be enough to rile up their crazed corners and then just disrespect everything that's ever happened on this kind of day as well. Maybe you rethink it. And as, as, uh, <laughs> as the survivor there told us earlier, I hope you have the day that you deserve. Moving on. Hey, you guys. Um, did your auntie ever tell you when I go to McDonald's, make sure that you order the Big Mac in the quarter pounder with no ketchup, because then they'll fry it up fresh for you. Or, 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 or. make sure you ask for the the fries with no salt, and then ask for some salt at the window so they can go. I thought you didn't want any salt. You get fresh fries that way. All of these things have been dispelled apparently by this uh, uh, this one McDonald's worker who says all oh, that is BS. And she has a lot, a long list of things that you guys been getting wrong. Let's watch. That life hack, get a fry with no salt, ask for salt at the window and get a fry fresh is bullshit. First of all, you can just ask for the fry made fresh and we'll make it fresh. Second of all, you know, we can just take the fries out of the thing and just put it back in the fryer for like five seconds and it burns all the salt off. 99.9% of the time, the ice cream machine is not broken. There are three reasons why we usually do tell you the ice cream machine is broken. One, it's being cleaned. Two, it's in heat mode, which is basically the ice cream in there is hot for whatever reason. Three, 
if it's extremely busy and we're extremely understaffed and we're backed up with cars, a lot of the time we'll just not serve ice cream until the rush is over. Quarter meat is fresh. It's in a fridge, it's not frozen, and we drop it fresh, it's cooked to order every time. So if you want something fresh, quarter pounder. If you want cookies and you want them to taste good, ask them to make them fresh. They literally take two minutes and they're delicious when they're fresh. Don't ask for extra Oreos or M&Ms in your McFlurry. It's such a waste of money. The reason there's no Oreos at the bottom is because bitches don't mix it enough. What you should do is be like, can I have another McFlurry? Can you mix it really well? The water bottle is literally such a waste of money. You can get a large cup of water for free. Just get that. There's our friend who's teaching us how to the game behind McDonald's. So there's so many things here, really fast. I want to go through some of her things. She goes, if you want a fresh burger, just ask for it fresh. Really? Is that going to work? I'm sorry. If you haven't found out yet, um, I'm going to push back. Um, okay. You want your burger fresh? Ask for it, please. Okay. She already told us that if you want the fries fresh, ask for it. And what they'll do instead is dip it back into the oil and make sure that the salt burns back off. Which, by the way, win for me. That sounds a little fresh, fresher than sitting under the heat lamp. I win. Okay. Next one was. Um, the ice cream machine, we already knew that. Let's run this really fast. There was that uh, from last year we talked about the broken McFlurry machines. Um, we know this already, but I, mean, I understand we're still educating. So that is the one thing I agree with uh, our, our heroine on here. Um, across the country, the ice cream machines are actually being cleaned or put down overnight. Or as she admitted there, sometimes they're just a little bit too busy. And therefore they say, oh, the ice cream machine's broken, can't do it. Sorry, guy, be gone. Um, so we know the game there. Uh, next on her list was quarter pound meat is fresh. I don't know, maybe it's because I don't go to McDonald's much anymore. But as a teenager, I definitely remember when they had the two for three meal, uh, two for three deal for big for quarter pounders. I would see about 18 quarter pounders sitting in a row so they wouldn't have to deal with all the people asking for two orders of the three. And then you have tons to make at the same time. They were dry and they were dried out from the heating lamp. Don't lie to me. Next. Uh, um, then the water bottle, finally. I understand this. I've always thought this because I grew up in St. Louis and also in Detroit, Michigan. But now I live in Los Angeles. We have water shortages. Um, we have recycled water. I don't want to drink water out of the faucet here. It's been purified and cleaned and chemical and that. I don't even know what the process it goes through. Uh, uh, <laughs> Brett Ehrlich definitely knows because he's seen the process. He used to live next to it. Anyways, we go through this process of, of water getting pushed through. The reason we ask for bottled water is because that water off the tap, it ain't gonna work here. I understand if you're in another state, do it there. That's a regional thing. But lastly, our good friend gave us this one small caveat after all of that advice. She said in the comment section when people are saying this, some of these things depend on who owns your local McDonald's. Isn't that the whole point of this? That's what I was saying in the first place. Listen, if you have certain people that are working there and they wanna order you up something fresh or fry something fresh for you, sure they'll do it, that's great and lovely. It's just not gonna happen every time. So my advice at the end of this is all, uh, at the end of all this, Buy some ground beef, go home, fry it up, eat your food. That's all, I'm sorry. And order your bottle of water, pour it out of your own tap, put it to your filtration system, I don't care. Buy your ice cream. The point is, is go home and eat. I understand sometimes I do have to do it as well. Not this time, so thank you. You know what we have time for? Good news. They get so happy, some people cry, some people laugh, some people smile. Excuse me, sir. Sir, I drew you. What the? It just makes them feel this joy inside, especially now during the pandemic. The drawing of you. Sorry, what? I did the drawing. needed to see something like that. We needed to see uh, joy in other people's faces. I hope it captures a moment in New York City history. Are you serious? Yeah. Yo, what is so good? Hey everybody, my name is Devon Rodriguez. I live in New York City and I went viral for drawing strangers on the subway. Devon Rodriguez uh, is a great human, um, and as he sits there drawing people on the subway, it could lean from creepy to then once it's done, it's a beautiful situation. Which makes me wonder, how long does this take? I mean, I guess in some some people's trips could 
go, I guess, from line to line, uh, from end to end, and maybe have some time to draw these things. Or he's just amazing at this, and he does it really quickly. This art is wonderful. And by the way, as this particular woman, as you're seeing here, then said, I was having the worst day. Man, I know people always say things like this. Like, you know, I got dogs because I hate humans. Humans suck. I'm still holding out hope. I love people. I love interactions with people. And I think even the worst people, which we've seen many times in public transit, because they're just having a bad day or they snap at you or they look at you a weird way, there's something behind them. They have an entire life, an entire day to themselves. And whatever put them there, we don't know. And maybe we can change it. And it's hard to do. This is definitely hard to do. I can't draw like this. Um, but De De Devon Rodriguez is definitely doing it. I love that. I love that about this. Um, and if you can, safely, I think we should always provide a little bit of good cheer to each other, even if it's just a compliment here and there. That does it for the watch list today. Up next is uh, the damage report with John Idarola. In comes the Dragon Squad. We have the watchers I see in a couple of comments. We're gonna talk about that tomorrow, but until then, we'll see you then and I will be watching.